Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. And in this video, I'm gonna do another like language overview. So this is gonna be like an in-depth multi-video overview of the language. But it just goes to show you like once you know the basic ideas, like if you've gone through all my like JavaScript conceptual videos, you'll realize that picking this up is pretty quick. And then once you've learned a few languages, you start really seeing the types of syntax that come are in common over and over again, and it becomes pretty straightforward. So the language we're talking about here is Nim. And the way I like to think about Nim is like, Crystal is to Ruby what Nim is to Python, in the sense that Crystal is basically a language that has very Ruby-like syntax, but it's compiled, so you can actually create faster programs than you could with Ruby, if you, you know, need to. Um, Nim is a lot like, syntactically, is a lot like Python, okay? but it is compiled. So it's not all like Python, but it's syntactically a lot like Python. It's compiled so you can write faster programs. And that is essentially uh, the the reason you'd want to use Nim. So if you really like Python and you're really comfortable with Python, then Nim is really easy to pick up because the syntax is nearly the same. Not exactly the same. There is a lot of differences, um, such as typing and having to use keywords for variable declarations and whatnot. Okay, so what I did is I headed over to REPL.IT, so you can do the same. Great way to test out new languages without having to go set up a whole bunch of stuff on your computer. And I just created a REPL for NIM. Okay, so I'm going to delete what I have right now. Okay. And what we're going to do is, as far as variable declarations go, you can declare variables with var, like JavaScript with like var, let, and const. Now the difference between the three of these is that var will be reassignable variables. Let's actually going to be for const, um, well, to not allow reassignment. And then const, um, it means constant at compile time. So it has to, the, 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 you have to have, a, the way I understand it is you have to have a set value. So if you assign a variable to something that's declared as a const, it can't be something that's like dynamically generated. It's got to be something that the compiler will know the minute it begins compiling. So it can't be something that like the user is going to input. It's 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 a constant at compile time. Okay, which, um, for example, if I had a variable that held user input, at the point of compile time, we don't know what the user's input is going to be, so that const couldn't do that. Um, cool. So that's that part. So if I want to declare a variable, I would just be like var. Um, x equals five. Okay, and, and no semicolons. Okay, so like Python, there's no semicolons. Uh, basically, a lot of it's done through indentation. So um, in Ruby, you kind of use that keyword end a lot to, to denote blocks of code. Here in Python, you use indentation to denote blocks of code. So um, var five, and um, Oh, I just forgot how the the print stuff to the console. Let me actually go hit Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z. There we go. I just wanted to remember how to do this. Print string. Okay, that's that's what I'm looking for. Wait, no. Print string return x discard. Print string hello world. Hmm. I never actually included the function that actually prints stuff to the the terminal. Okay. Mm 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 mm. Oh, no, no, that's because it was different before. Okay, so let's go back to the docs. Where Where's our standard hello world? Do, 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 do. Oh, echo, that's right. Like Python, it uses echo. I mean, not like Python, like uh, PHP. So in that case, let me just delete all this again. Var x equals five. Now, if I want to print that variable, I would just do echo x and that's it now this is going to compile and it should run the number five which you see right there perfect see so that part's pretty straightforward okay and then you can type your variable so if i wasn't planning to assign this right now i could be like x uh int okay and then i can be like x equals five Okay, and see, it still works, but I think if I don't type it, then we'll have a problem. Yep. Okay, so see, it was looking for a type. So if you're, if you're not going to, if you're not going to give the variable a value right away, so that way it can be dynamically typed or the type can be inferred, 
then you have to specify a type. Okay, which is very typical for any typed language. Um, cool. So that's that. So typing is a thing. Strings, etc. Uh, if statements. It's pretty much worked just like Python. So let's see here. Var x equals 5. So then if I do if, except here I don't have to do any parentheses if I remember correctly. It's just basically if I do x is greater than 3, then I would just do a semicolon very similar to Python. Tab will we'll echo x. And um, we'll say else. Echo one. Okay. You can see that time it echoes five because x is greater than three. But if I make x one, let's see how that changes. Okay, you see it's just like Python where basically you use kind of the colons to kick off a block of code, and then everything after the colon has to be indented um, on the on the uh, at the same level all the following lines. Okay, which was always kind of a I, what I always liked that idea because having sort of the forced indentation just forced you to have prettier code from the get go instead of it being just a good habit. It's like you have to do it, um, which has its benefits. Um, cool. Then you have a while loop. So, like Python, basically a while loop is like a traditional while loop. So, we do x equals one as long as x is. Um, less than eight, then we're going to echo x, and then we'll say x equals x plus one. So that way it increments each time, and this should print out one through seven. And that's what it did print out one through seven because the first time it loops it's one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six, and seven, and then the last time it's eight, so it doesn't loop again. And again, like Python, uh, the for loop is more of like a, an iterator loop. So you don't have that three part for loop that you'd have in most languages, you know, where you can do like i equals zero and then if this e is less than this and all that stuff. So for would work like this so like for num in, and then you can use a range. So I'm going to say zero to 10. So this is like Python, this is like a range operator. So when I do this, it's just going to generate essentially an iterable between 0 and 10. And it'll just iterate over that, meaning it'll just loop over it. So again, when you hear the word iterate, think loop. Um, for num from 0 to 10, we will then echo the num. So the num first is 0, then it's 1, then it's 2, then it's 3, then it's 4, then it's 5. So it should print 0 through 10 onto the screen. Let's just double check that it does that. And then it does that. 0 through 10. OK. So pretty straightforward. OK. Now, when it comes to arrays, what they have here is you do have dynamically typed arrays. And actually, you know what? Here you do have to type arrays. So let me actually go back and look that up. Arrays here are of fixed length. But then there is also a sequence as is, is is the, is the alternative. OK. So let's see here. OK. Do, 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 do. So here they build types. We won't get into that yet. OK. But essentially, the syntax is this. OK. If you want to do an array, you would do it like, uh, let's just take a one more look here, array, and then you this is what's inside of it. And this is the typing. OK, it's a fixed length. So if I were to do this, x equals, what was it, r, array, array. We have an array with 1 through 10 in it. And it's an int array. And let's echo that array. OK, or let's echo x. So we should have an array 1 through 10. Undeclared identifier. Oh, I have to put the var in there. I got to put the keyword. Not JavaScript. Can't get away with that, forgetting that. Do, 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 do. Type to sum. Meta type is not valid here. 
type instead of okay so maybe it's looking for this uh, group, let's go take a look at the docs okay type open arrays here we go that's what I'm looking for so test open array nope we're still creating functions for no need uh huh. I guess the tuples. Tuples are just basically arrays. You can't mute or fixed arrays. Like not only just fixed in size, but fixed in what their values are. Uh, okay. So it looks like the array stuff is a little bit more complicated than we're gonna go over right now. So I'll go into functions. Now functions are referred to as procedures in them. So you use this keyword proc. So we'll just say proc my func. And then we'll say it takes a parameter. So we'll have a parameter called x, which is a string. OK, and then it returns a string. OK, and well, actually, first we'll return nothing. But either way, I would put a colon there. And then just like Python, you would just tab. So we're just going to echo uh, my func. Or no, no, echo x. Okay, and then, then basically we just call a function. My func, hello world. Echo mm, x has no type. Qs. Hmm? So x is a string. So then expression echo x has no type but it does have a type hmm I just did this pretty much yesterday so I know it's pretty, that's pretty much the syntax so let's go here procedures is what we're looking for and here in the docs because that's what they call functions here type relations overloading resolutions statements and expressions proc 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 here we go Okay, proc foo, yep, I get all that. Color But I don't think you have to we don't have to return a value, I don't think. Okay, let's just do it with return value first. Then we'll come back and research what to do when you're not returning a value. So basically, if I want to return a value, I would put string, well, actually, no, I do that. And then I would return, saying I want to return a string, and then you, you do equals. And then that would be the sort of the syntax there. So um, in that case, what I would do is we'll make this return x, and then we will echo the result of my function. And see that works because basically hello world gets passed in as x, and then we return x. So then the, basically the res basically I'm saying echo hello world. It's just a complicated hello world. Cool. Now what if I wasn't going to actually return the value, or actually I'm not going to even really. In this case, I am using the return value, but what if I wasn't? Okay. What if I just did this? I'm going to get an error. Okay, because this return value happens, and like I'm just going to add a line in the code here. So we return x, but I'm going to add echo x here. So that way we still get something on the screen, but I never do anything with that return value. I'm going to get an error. Okay, my func hello world is of type string and has to be discarded. Now, with this discarded idea is pretty interesting. So the idea is that in Nim, there is there can be garbage collection if you choose to have it, but they don't assume that you will have garbage collection automated within your code. Um, so the compiler won't assume that. So in that case, if this function returns a value and you're not doing anything with it, then technically you're just, you're just wasting memory. So it prevents you from doing that and says, hey, if you're not gonna use return values, you're not using it as a, it doesn't get fed into another function like echo. It doesn't get passed into a, assigned to a variable. Then you need to discard it so that way it gets removed from memory. Okay, so then I want to do that. Discard my func and then I can run the code. 
See there, it runs the code just fine. Because it's saying, hey, good, you didn't you know, waste memory and keep this piece of data around that you don't need. So that is, uh, that's essentially NIM in a nutshell. Okay, we've learned um, most of the basics. Uh, I do want to just go back to the whole array thing, even if we don't declare one right now. Because they do, or your standard arrays are again fixed in length, like in many sort of lower level languages like C, C, Go. But like Go, Go you have slices, which act as sort of your more flexible array thing. Um, and here they call them sequences. So sequences are like slices in Go, um, where they're more dynamic array arrays. There's more to it, but that's basically a good way a good way of thinking about it. But aside from that, that's a pretty good start now if you want to learn more you just read the docs do more like any programming language but it has a lot of standard libraries it's, I mean this is just the documentation for the language itself but it has a lot of standard libraries um, it's a fairly young language I don't think it's even 1.0 yet and uh, but it's, it's getting a lot of popularity especially people who want to do things like game programming but they like Python syntax but they want a lower level language this kind of merges that whole happy world and then I heard the compiler does some cool stuff, like it'll actually write documentation for you. So that way when you compile your code, you'll actually have documentation paired with it in the same way that GraphQL creates documentation uh, for your API. So there's a lot of little neat things like that. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoy this introduction to the NIM language. You guys have a great day and enjoy. Mm -hmm.